In this video, we will explore the tool To Go, which gives children the opportunity to control an object on a screen using a range of instructions and built-in backgrounds and challenges. It can be used as an introduction to programming and is aimed at children between the ages of six and eight. Many teachers use To Go as a follow-on from using the floor robot. So in this video, we will look at how to modify the settings to ensure the appropriate level of complexity for your children and how to switch on the programming aspect so that children can build up and run a set of instructions or a procedure. Before we have a look at the tool To Go itself, let's have a look in the teachers area. We're going to explore the computing scheme of work. Let's have a look at year one in our computing scheme of work. As you can see, there are nine different units that have been recently updated. The unit that uses the tool to go is this one here, unit 1.5, Maze Explorers. I'm going to open that up. Now you'll notice, first of all, that you've got the lesson plans here and there are four lessons in this particular unit. Here is a slideshow, PowerPoint slideshow for lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four, and the knowledge organizer, as well as the resources that you will need to set as to-dos to use with your class in the lessons. Let's have a look at the lessons first of all. So this is Maze Explorers. Let's scroll down to the medium term plan. It's, as you can see, you've got your title there and your success criteria for the four lessons. And here is lesson one. It looks at challenges one and two. You can see your aims, success criteria and the resources with hyperlinks directly to the activities that you need to use for this particular lesson. Now at the bottom, you'll see the activities for the lesson are set out in this table format with the activities down the left column and the slide names on the right hand side. Let's go back now to the home page of this unit 1.5 Maze Explorers and I'm going to download this slideshow so I can see what this PowerPoint looks like for lesson number one. So I've now opened up the slideshow that's used with lesson number one Maze Explorers and as you can see if I scroll through the slides you have your aims, success criteria, an introduction slide which is slide four, slide five is the first challenge so there are guide images, suggested questions, and in the notes at the bottom underneath the slide, the notes for teachers will clearly explain how to use that slide with your children. So the idea is you would have the lesson plans to one side and you would have the slideshow displayed on the big screen for your pupils to see. And at the end of the slides, you'd be able to review the success criteria for that particular lesson. So lesson number one here in the Maze Explorers has three activities. You've got activity one, which includes challenge one in two go. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Activity two is looking at challenge two in two go. And then there is a further activity three where you can set some extension activities. Now there will be hyperlinks in the slides themselves and also in the lesson plan, which if I press control and click on that, it will take me directly into the challenge that I want to use to set with my children. Now we'll look a little bit later on at the end of the session, how you can set these tasks as a to-do for your class using the share globe icon on the left-hand side in the menu there. So I'm back on the home page in Purple Mash now, and I'm going to open up the tool To Go just to explore it. To Go can be found either here in the tools area or in the computing section down here. I'm going to click on the tools first of all, and you'll see the coding tools are up the top here. Here is To Go. I'm going to click on that and launch the app. You can either select one of the pre-made built-in backgrounds or you can make your own. You can draw your own picture, use one of the clip art options, or using the choose file button at the bottom here, you can select a file from your own PC that you saved away that you can use as your own background. There are also a set of challenges that start off very simply and increase in complexity as you move through the challenges. These challenges can be differentiated and set as to-dos for your pupils. Let's start with challenge number one. Guide the fish to the treasure chest. This challenge uses the very simplest of instructions, up, down, left and right. And as you click on one of these instructions, the fish moves one step at a time to determine his path. Now I can select try another, which will take me to challenge number two, which increases in complexity. This time I have to drive the car to the bank and then to the hospital. You will notice this time my input has changed when now I have to select how many left, right or up and down that the car is going to drive. So let's go one step left, it's going to go down seven steps. In order to change the complexity of the input that your children are using, you can use the silver settings cog here. 
Now that was the very simplest one that was on challenge number one. That is the instructions used in challenge number two. You can increase the complexity to introduce diagonals, which will get to your destination more efficiently. Or you can use this option here, which is more like the B-Bots or the Romas. If I select 90 degrees there, this is now a forward arrow, back arrow, anti-clockwise and clockwise turn. And again, I have the numbers at the bottom telling the turtle how many of those steps to take. So let's now use that set of instructions to see if I can drive my car to the hospital. So first of all, I need to turn him round because he's facing the wrong way here. I need to turn him, let's do an anti-clockwise turn, I need to do two 90 degree turns, anti-clockwise, round he goes, now he's facing up. So I'm going to use my forward arrow and I'm going to go four steps forward and now I'm going to do one anti-clockwise turn to the left and now drive six steps forward and hopefully he'll get to the bank. This time I'm going to try that challenge again, but I'm going to use my settings cog to turn the programming elements on. What this does is it gives the children the opportunity to program a five-step algorithm or a 10-step algorithm. They can build up their instructions in this algorithm one step at a time if they like, or they can also use a loop. Now loops are very useful if you are wanting the children to create two-dimensional shapes. So this time I'm going to complete this challenge instead of using one step at a time, I'm going to see if I can program a five step algorithm or a 10 step algorithm. So first of all, I'm going to turn him one anti-clockwise turn to the left and I can play that and see what happens. Excellent. Let's rewind that back again and see what I, he needs to now do. He needs to now go forward one step and as you can see, you can keep playing it and build up your algorithm one step at a time. When you're building up your algorithm, it is important to rewind back to the beginning each time so your car starts again at his original position. So I think this is the program that I need to make the car now move to the hospital. I'm going to rewind him right back to his starting position and press play. So let's look now at how you can use the pre-made backgrounds to set your own challenges for your pupils. I'm going to use this flower template. So here's my little bumblebee. He's going to go and visit all of the other flowers to pollinate them. So first of all, as a teacher, I need to decide what instructions do I want my pupils to use and how complicated do I want this to be? So I can first of all select the type of input that I want the children to be using and do I want them to be programming a five, 10 step algorithm? Let's turn the programming on. So the children can now experiment to see how many of the flowers the B can pollinate using this set of instructions and a 10 step algorithm. So here I have built up a nine step algorithm and I'm going to press play now and see if he will follow my instructions and see if I've programmed this correctly. Now he hasn't exactly gone where I wanted him to go. So I'm going to have to debug my program and work out which of the instructions need removing or replacing with other sets of instructions. Let's rewind it and see if that works. You can further increase the complexity of this tool by again clicking on the settings cog, clicking on the general tab and decreasing the step length which will increase the number of grid squares on your background. As the teacher I have now selected the settings that I want my pupils to use. I have started my algorithm by putting in the first two set of instructions which if I play that it will take me to the first red flower at the top there. I want to see if my class can now complete the remainder of this 10 step algorithm to see if their bumblebee can visit the other flowers. So first of all, I'm going to rewind it back to the beginning. I'm going to save that in my work folder and I'm now going to set that as to do for my children to complete independently. If you want to find more information on how to set to do's and how to mark and assess the work that's been completed, you can access our teachers area here, go to the professional development tab and into our training platform. Our training platform has extensive videos and guides for lots of different areas to do with Purple Mash. The setting and assessing course here will guide you on how to set to-dos, how to differentiate, how to mark and how to close your to-dos.